Hello everybody! How's it going? Welcome to a custom card showcase, and this is going to be the first of three, because we're going to be splitting this Baldur's Gate expansion by Mint T Fan into three parts. Um, because there are three parts to this uh, custom player card expansion. There are the 5e class and subclass, so these are going to be uh, cards and permanents that are related to the classes and subclasses of 5e. Maybe all of them, maybe not, I don't know, we're going to find out, but there's 155 cards. We have 78 cards in this Investigator expansion. Investigators are pretty straightforward. And then we got 134 player cards. So there are a lot of cards we're going to be talking about in this uh, in this series. Breaking down and checking out a Baldur's Gate 3 custom expansion. Uh, I just want to say, uh, the custom content creators in this game make awesome stuff. And uh, this might be the year I print some custom cards in player I've, and in paper. I've been really thinking about it. But I just want to say thank you to Minty Fan and any other custom content creators who have checked out their stuff in the past. And any future custom content creators. If you have an idea, I think you should follow your heart and do it. Because um, uh, it's going to be a good time. It's fun to explore the designs. And it's fun to, you know, share those designs with people. And I'm always happy to showcase custom player card expansions. Alright, so I think I'm going to start with the class and subclass pack first. Mostly because it's on the left. Alright. Let's all get them all loaded in. And let's dive in. Okay. So. These are the classes. I've checked out some of these in the past. We'll, we'll get into all those. But then also, there are going to be... Um, additional player cards that are only for that class. So you can only include these in your deck if you are that class. So there's a lot of symbols on these cards. All right, this is going to be wild. Um, so let's look at classes over here. Let's check this out. Some class cards have a class keyword. A card with the class keyword must be purchased at deck creation. An investigator can only have one asset with the class keyword in their deck unless explicitly stated otherwise. For the purposes of other card effects, your class keyword dictates your class. For example, if you purchase the Bard card during deck creation, you are considered to be Bard class and may take the cards that specify Bard deck only, such as Vicious Mockery. Okay. Subclass. Some cards have the subclass keyword. A card with a subclass keyword can only be upgraded as an add-on to a card with a class keyword of the same name. Treat both the subclass card and the class card as one single card. For effects that would exhaust your class as subclass card, you exhaust both simultaneously because they are treated as one single card. For the purposes of standalone scenarios, you may purchase a class card and then immediately upgrade into a subclass card. Okay. Okay. Alright, there are... Just like D&D, &D, there is a lot of text. So we're going to dive in and check out my second favorite class... Barbarian. So I think what we'll do is we'll check out the class and then we will check out the upgrades for it. I think that'll be fun. Alright. Barbarian. This is a permanent talent. Um, uses two rage. Barbarian enters battle enters play with one additional rage for every ten experience you've earned in total. What's the first favorite class? Oh, I'll, I'll let you know when we get there. Uh, so, tracking experience for every one you earned. It's going to be a amount that you will need to keep track of what you earned. But this will not count on cards such as uh, effects such as exiling, downgrading, using discount mechanics like refine, uh, down the rabbit hole, arcane research, and raven quill. So, this is just XP that you've earned. Just for keeping track of that. So, it enters with two rage and one additional rage for every ten experience you've earned in total. That's fun. Lightning Bolt Rage. Exhaust Barbarian and spend one Rage. You may come in ranged and get plus two skill value while attacking or resolving an ability on a treachery card. After turn ends or you fail a skill test, you are no longer in ranged. Flavorly, that's pretty accurate to how Barbarians go. That's pretty sweet. Okay. I dig it. I dig it. Nice and simple. And then we have our subclasses. What the heck? There's so much. I mean, I, I, this is going to be a lot. This is going to be a lot, but... Berserker subclass. For experience, Barbarian ra enters with play with two additional rage. So you're going to have base four with this in your deck, assuming you haven't hit any of the other thresholds. 
As your action, Frenzy. While in ranged, when you attack an enemy, if you have advantage, which we'll get to in a second, or if a chaos token with a non-negative modifier is revealed during an attack, you deal an additional damage. Okay, let's check out this advantage thing. The advantage keyword is designated by this icon. Yay! Follows a few rules. When you would reveal a chaos token during step 3 of a skill test, reveal two chaos tokens instead of one. Resolve one token and ignore the other using the criteria below. If you reveal an auto-fail token and a skull token, you must resolve the auto-fail token. This is a way to simulate rolling na double nat ones. Okay. So if you don't know what advantage is in, um, in Dungeons and Dragons, it's actually pretty simple. You roll two dice and you take the higher result. Uh, I mean, it might be that. It's been a while since I played, but I remember that's what advantage is. Otherwise, resolve the token with the higher modifier. If there is a tie, you may choose. Um, auto fails consider the lowest modifier and elder sign the highest. If a token has no modifier, treat its modifier as zero. For example, if you draw a minus one and a skull reveal another token, you must resolve the skull token. Okay, okay. Advantage does not stack. If you have two sources of advantage, you do not reveal additional tokens. Having one or more sources of advantage cancels out one or more sources of disadvantage. Okay. Well, over here, let's also check out disadvantage. When you would reveal a chaos token during step three of a skill test, reveal two instead of one, resolve one and ignore the other. If you revealed an auto-fail token, uh, resolve both chaos tokens when the te uh, instead. Makes sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's dropping the bomb on you. Otherwise, resolve the token with a lower modifier. If there's a tie, you may choose. Auto-fail is considered to be the lowest modifier, and elder sign the highest again. If uh, the no modifier, disadvantage does not stack if you have two sources. Okay. So they have a double one. All right. Okay, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So, when you attack an enemy, if you have advantage or if a chaos token with a non-negative modifier is revealed during an attack, you deal an additional damage. Pretty fun, pretty fun. Okay, let's check out Wild Magic. Subclass permanent, when you rage, shuffle cards bonded to Barbarian and draw one at random. Okay, so these are the Wild Magic cards here for Barbarian. We have Weapon Infusion. Attach Weapon Infusion to a Weapon Asset in your play area or set it aside out of play. Attached Asset gains the Relic Trait. You get plus one skill down and deal plus one damage during attacks of the Attached Asset. If you're no longer in Rage, set it aside out of play. Okay. Put Bolt of Lightning to play in your play area. Discover one clue at your location. After you see a skill test by X or more where X is a Shroud Valley location up to one connection away. Exhaust Bolt of Light, discover one clue at that location, and once again, if you're no longer, um, um, no longer enraged. It's going to be for all of them, which makes sense. Interesting. Okay. Teleport. Teleport into play area. Move actions do not trigger attack of opportunity. You may move to any revealed location, and if it is connected to your location, anytime you move, you may disengage all enemies engaged with you. If you're no longer engaged, set aside teleport out of play. Dark Tendrils. Put Dark Dendrils into play in your play area. When you deal damage to an enemy, gain one resource or exhaust that enemy. That's pretty cool. If you're no longer enraged. Okay. That seems pretty sick. And there's no way... I mean, unless we get the Barbarian cards, there's no way to add to your rages. So right now, you only get two. Assuming you're only level four. And then we got Intangible Spirit. Otherwise known as Spirit Goat. Uh, put it into play, into your play area, heal a damage and a horror. After you defeat a Vader or discard an enemy, place a Rage on Barbarian. Okay, that's pretty sick. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And if you're no longer in Rage, set this aside. Okay. Uh, I think this one is the one that, like, if we're looking at the subclasses, for me, Berserker is a little bit sweet. Because, you know, it's just, like, pretty consistent damage if you build your deck around advantage. Um, or just, like, in a Bless deck. Like, if I was playing a Bless Yorick Barbarian deck... Sign me up. I am so into that. Uh, the Wild Magic one is definitely seems very fun. All of these are really nice to hit. Okay. Last one we got here is Wild Heart. Animal Aspect. When you purchase Barbarian, choose two aspects. Once per test, a non-weakness card in your hand, deck, or play area means an instance of each chosen aspect skill icon until the end of that test. Interesting. That's pretty cool. 
Uh, so one thing as well, you might some people might be saying, wow, these cards seem really good. Uh, if you notice up here, craft your perfect campaign. Um, permanent assets that are available at deck creation give the players extra power that can turn some away. These cards have been designed to scale with the progress of a campaign as best as possible. However, if insufficient, here are some suggestions to offset the difficulty of your campaign should you choose to include a class cards in your playthrough. Each investigator starts the first scenario with one fewer resource and one fewer card in hand. On the first scenario of every uh, scenario of the campaign, begin the game with one doom on the first agenda. Play on a higher difficulty, suffer a physical or mental trauma, decrease one of your skills based values, choose to play with a random additional basic weakness. So, what uh, what um, Minty Fan is basically saying here is, hey, um, it could be, these cards are powerful, and you could just balance your uh, campaign around it, right? Like, I'm including these cards, I know they're strong, hey, why don't you figure out what you can do with it? Or, just have fun being powerful, right? As is the D&D &D way. Okay. I think this one's interesting. I, it's hard for me to say. This is like my build for Barbarian, so. Let's check out these five cards for Barbarian. Okay. So these cards are only available in a Barbarian deck. So if you're a Barbarian, you can only play these cards. Reckless Attack. One cost event. Barbarian deck only. Fast. Play when you initiate an attack or evasion attempt. You get advantage for this skill test. Draw one card. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty powerful. So you get to draw two tokens, keep the higher, it also replaces itself. Synergizes really well with Berserker. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm into it. Danger Sense, one cost, one experience. Oh, you also have to be in, like, the class to play it. But as you see, they're saying, hey, this is a Guardian Survivor class. I like that they're also linked to that. I imagine that's going to carry over for the most part. Yeah, it seems to be. That's cool. All right. Danger Sense. One cost, one experience. Barbarian deck only. Fast. Play when investigated location draws a non weakness treachery card. Test foot three. If you succeed, discover two clues at your location, and that investigator gets advantage while resolving revelation abilities on that treachery card. Interesting. Okay. Draws a non weakness treachery. Test foot three. Cool. That's pretty neat. I like that card. I think that works really well with the Wild Heart, too. I'm into it. Enraged Throw. <laughs> Sorry, bear. Uh, this is a zero-cost event for one experience. Commits for two fist. Berserker Barbarian only. Okay. So this one's linked only to Berserker. All right. Play only while enraged. Fight. You get plus two fists for the attack. If you succeed... Deal damage equal to the enemy's total damage and horror to another enemy at its location. If the attacked enemy is not elite, you may move it to a connecting location before dealing this damage. Okay. Yeah, you throw the enemy. Attacked enemy's total damage and horror to another enemy at its location. Yeah. I mean, like, the card reads really well, right? But then it also has that, like, enemy problem where... I think it's going to trigger less than you think when you're just reading the card. You know? I was thinking, like, does it really need the plus two fist? Because this gives you plus two skill value. Plus four fist is a lot. But this card, really, you need to have five experience in your deck, including it, to really take advantage of it. You also need to be enraged. So it's going to use one of your enraged uses. I mean, you do get four of them. With just these two at level F at four experience. Yeah. Because once again, you're not like uh you're also I mean you're also dealing one damage to the enemy you're attacking, right? So if you succeed, deal damage equal to the attacked enemy's total damage and horror to another enemy at its location. But it doesn't say instead of dealing its damage, you also do it. So you're also dealing one damage to that enemy. Neat. Relentless Rage. Zero cost, two experience. Fast, Barbarian deck only. Remain enraged after you fail a skill test. Okay. After you fail a skill test, exhaust Relentless Rage. You get advantage on your next skill test this round. Pretty simple. I dig it. How often am I looking at failing a skill test? Not often, but it could happen. I don't know how much I'd want. I mean, I'd probably run it in Berserker. Right? I don't think I'd run it in these other two. 
I dig it. All right, Feral Instincts. This one's a survivor only. A three experience skill. It's innate and developed. Barbarian Silas. Let's go. If this test is successful for each different skill icon on Feral Instinct, draw one card. Oh, okay. So this works really well with Wild Heart. Um, if this test fails for each different skill icon on Feral Instinct, return a skill card from your discard pile to your hand. Holy cow. That is, uh... That's, uh, pretty good. <laughs> That's a pretty good card. Ah, uh, yes. 7 XP investment? Yes, yeah, because once again, you need, like, to do it... Uh, you could do this with just, like, 3 as the base one to start getting stuff, but this makes this one really nice. I do like that there's stuff for each of them. I mean, maybe not this one. This one's kind of just, like, random chance. Should probably say not, same, not named Feral Instinct? Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably should say not named Feral Instinct. I agree with that. I would love to play the Barbarian Silas, though. Alright, Brutal Critical. This is an innate developed three experience skill barbarian deck only. While it's committed to a skill test during an attack you perform, your attack deals an additional damage for each fist on brutal critical. So this is just right now a vicious blow, right? As printed. But if you're a brute of the bear. Or, what's that one card? Grizzly Totem. Or Grizzly Totem. Helping Hand can also add icons. Double the skill icons each one on the test. Okay. It also gets plus one. Yeah, because wilds would count, right? Wilds would count. I mean, Min can't play this card. But if you're playing with Min... But, like, these are cards that... Once again, uh, these, are all, these are all something that Silas could play. Because I, I don't think Min... I don't think Min I would look at doing that with. But, like... Grizzly Totem? And Helping Hand. Along with uh, Wild Heart Bros. Silas? Mm, that seems pretty fun. That does seem like a pretty good time. Okay. I'm into it. Barbarian, I think, is really nice. All right, these guys can come back over here. We'll flip them face down because we are done with them. We're going to flip these face down too. Uh, oh, this, this is going to take a while. <laughs> this might, I was thinking maybe we could check out two today, but I think we're only going to be checking out these today because they, it seems like a lot. All right, the Bard. Class permanent. Lightning Bolt. During a skill test performed by another investigator location or connected location, place a non weakness card from your hand on top of your deck. They get plus one skill value for this test. If they succeed, draw the top or bottom card of your deck. Then the once for each investigator per round. Interesting. Are you allowed to take Barbarian on any class? Yes. Because they are neutral, right? You just wouldn't be able to take the upgrade cards associated with it. At least that's how I read it. Let's look. Is there a do 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 subclass? Trust. So no, I think it would follow the same, right? You you need, they're just like restrictions, but like the you could take the the class at any any class. So during a skill test performed, place a non-weakness card from your hand on top of your deck. They get plus one skill type. They get to see draw a top or bottom card of your deck. All right, hear me out. Norman Withers the Bard. Hear me out, chat. Norman Withers the Bard. That 
That seems kind of fun. But then you don't you draw the bottom card of your deck, you play the top card of your deck, right? I'm down for it. Okay, let's see the main classes. Sorry, the subclasses. Um College of Lore. You may reduce the difficulty by one instead of giving plus one skill value for Bardic Inspiration. You may exhaust Bard to reduce the difficulty an additional time. Okay. Magical Secrets. You may include up to two non-Bard class specific in your car and your deck, ignoring its class deck only. <laughs> That's, uh... That seems fun. That seems fun. I don't really know, like, what they all are, but I imagine this is something that will really unlock over time. I like the redu uh, reducing the difficulty. Anything that allows me to play uh, Tested Zero more consistently, I think is really fun. Especially when they do Exploit Weakness, when you can like use that card a bit more. I think that's really cool. Okay. College of Valor. You may place a card on the bottom of your deck instead of the top of your deck for Bardic Inspiration. That's pretty good. Uh, after trigger Bardic Inspiration, the Investigator gets uh, advantage for this test and gains one resource. <laughs> okay. Oh, hear me out. Hear me out, chat. What's that one card? It's the Seeker card with the wolf on it. The Space Wolf. What's that one card? What's Space Wolf, chat? What's that card called? Written in the stars. Yeah. Okay. So you put... Yeah, you put like a deduction on top and then just go nuts. Okay. Count me in. Foresight 2. Alright. Let's see what color is Bard. Hey, look. It's Rogue Seeker Mystic. Who would have thought? Hey, I was playing this card last night on stream. Okay. I'm into it. College of Swords. You may trigger Bardic Inspiration for attacks and evasion tips at, uh, you perform. So notably, these are another investigator. So Bard is not great for solo. If you do deal an additional plus one skill value, you get an additional plus one skill value. If you succeed, deal one damage to that enemy. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like College of Swords. Attack Bard. But I think what's more important is let's check out these other cards. All right. Vicious Mockery. Zero cost event, bard deck only. Parlay. Choose a non enemy location. Test fist, sorry, brain or foot two. If you succeed, deal one damage to the enemy and attach Vicious Mockery to it. Forced. When attached enemy would attack, move, or force an ability on it would trigger. Discard Vicious Mockery. Cancel that attack, move, or ability. That's cool. Yeah, I think that's a nice, uh, I think that's a nice, uh, card. I think I like it at zero, too. This would be fun to kind of just, like, have in the game as well. I dig it. Song of Rest. A two-cost, one-experience event. Bard deck only. Exceptional. All right, exceptional. Parlay in player order, each investigator heals a damage or a horror. It immediately takes an, ac an action as if it were their turn. As a reaction, after you draw Song of Rest, reveal it and draw one card max once per round. That's interesting, right? Because what it kind of does is it... Uh, it replaces the fact that there's kind of just a one-of in your deck, right? Um, um, it replaces the uh, that it's only a one-of, so you get to draw another version of it. I think this card's pretty sick. I like it. I also like that it's a parlay. Yeah, that's a cool card. I dig it. Jack of all trades. Interesting. One experience, every symbol, skill, but notably not wild. Innate developed. Bar bard deck only myriad. While this card is committed to a skill test you're performing, if all of your base skills are equal, or if the skill being tested is not your highest skill, this card gains wild, wild. After you draw a Jack of All Trades, reveal it and gain one resource. Whoo! This seems really good, doesn't it? Uh, 
obviously, Lola, Jenny, they all love the fuck out of this. Uh, Amina loves the hell out of this. Wilson Richards as well. Carson. Amanda. Amanda likes this. Preston. I probably still wouldn't play it in Preston. But that's just because, like, Preston... I mean, maybe you could as a defense card. But, I, like, me, Preston doesn't have stats, you know? Like, he's just not a stat boy. But that's just me. That's a good card. I mean, I even like it for Finn, right? Skill being tested on your highest is kind of just as good. I mean, I think for that one, you need it to be... You need to have one in the stat. And it needs to be a defensive stat. I wouldn't want it for, like, my one-fist investigators, right? Like, I'm not putting this in Norman Withers and being like, thank God I can now punch at four, right? Um, This is for, like, Finn. Trish, right? Um, But I wouldn't... I mean, I think Trish can do better than this. But, uh... I would play it in Finn. I'd play it in Finn, or I'd play it in threes or twos. I don't think I'd play it otherwise. Cool card, though. And Struth Harp. So, for say, for winning, it would work on everything except foot, right? Yeah, for Winifred, it would work on anything except foot. Well, that's pretty nice for Winifred, too, yeah. It's a powerful card. It's Myriad, too, so you get three for one. All right, Anstruth Harp. Item, Relic, Instrument, Bard Deck only exceptional. As a reaction, after trigger Bardic Inspiration or Parlay, place one charge on Anstruth Harp. Um, Alessandra. Spend two charges, play a card, or draw a card. Spend three charges, discover a clue at any location. That's cool. It's pretty powerful. Takes up a hand slot. I mean, free abilities to play cards is kind of cool. Or parlay is kind of nice as well. I dig it. The bard one seems fun. I like that there's a lot of uh, mischievous things you can get up to. Like this counter charm. Let's see. X cost event 3 experience is an inside bard deck only. Fast. Play when an investigator at any location initiates a skill test. This test automatically succeeds and X is the test difficulty. After you draw a counter charm, reveal it and gain a resource. Yep. So this is like uh, on par with uh, Justify the Means. It's kind of like the same sort of space. I'd run this in like big money decks for sure. Yeah, I like that you. Once I like the whole after you draw it. I think that would be a cool mechanic that I'd want to see in the game as well. I think it's pretty neat. Font of inspiration, one cost, four experience, bard deck only. Parlay test brain or uh, foot three. Once one at a time, reveal cards on top of the enemy investigator's deck until the cards with total combined cost of level of X, max ten. Or more have been revealed. Investigators draw all level 1 to 5 cards and shuffle the rest of their decks. X the amount you succeeded by. What? Okay, let's do that again. Let's check that out again. Foot or brain 3. One at a time, reveal cards on top of any investigator's decks until cards with total combined level of X. Max 10 or more have been revealed. Investigators draw all level 1 to 5 cards, shuffling the rest into their decks. X is the amount you succeed by. That's pretty cool. I think I like it. I think I think that's pretty sweet. Yeah. That's a cool card. Just the design on that card is really neat. I mean, honestly, it's so sick to use D&D as inspiration. Dude, Druid, there are so many fucking cards. Are you kidding me? This is going to be insane. But to use um, uh, D&D for inspiration, like, these are all just, like, abilities that bards have. There's so much to, like, pull from for design. I think that's pretty sweet. Okay. 
cleric. Ooh. Yeah, we're only going to do the, 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 the subclasses today. I very grossly underestimated how long this was going to take. Because we got... What the heck's going on on my phone? Okay. <clears throat> Cleric. Uses two divinity. Enters play with one additional divinity for every ten experience you've earned in total. As an action, turn undead. Spend one of div divinity. Parlay. Move a non-only enemy from your location to a connecting location. Enemies moved by this effect cannot move for the remainder of the round. Okay. That's a powerful effect. Um, as we saw... As we see with Parallel Ash Campete, anything that allows you to move enemies is very powerful. Obviously, the guitar is more powerful than this, but it still is a very nice effect, right? To have at level zero. All right. Life Domain is a reaction. Disciple of Life. After one of your card effects heals damage or horror from a card, the healed card's controller gains one resource. Carolyn? Preserve life as an action. Spend one div divinity. Heal three damage or three horror or any combination, there, combination thereof from among investigators and or ally asset at your location and connected locations. Makes sense. Healing, you know. Um, it's just healing. Cleric's heal, and this is the life domain for that. Light domain. After, uh, as a reaction, Radiance of the Dawn, after one of your card effect cancels an attack or damage and horror... Choose an investigator to get advantage on their next skill test. Would it be a good idea to not fully finish subclasses before going to the other Mythos packs so we can see a bit of everything? I don't understand what you're saying by that, unfortunately. I mean, we had to finish... The subclasses are all over here, right? We had to finish subclasses before we get to investigators, and then player cards I don't think are linked to the subclasses at all when I look through them, when I gave them a skim. Yeah, just general player cards and basic weaknesses. Cancels an attack or damage. Cleric Daniela? Advances is basically using Jacqueline's power. You reveal two tokens, take the higher one. Warning Flare. When Investigator would be dealt damage or horror, spend one div Divinity Cancel to two damage and or horror dealt. And look at the... No, I mean, this is one video, right? I, I can't, like, have a video where I, I just suddenly go away from the subclasses, right? This is the subclass video. I think this is just... I think it's just easier if we do all the subclasses. Because they're kind of an expansion all in of themselves, right? This is, like, three different expansions you can play with. Baldur's Gate 3 has three expansions. That's how I'm treating it anyway. I like this. I like the cancel one. Also, it's really nice, yeah, with uh, Light Mode Diana. I'm into it. Knowledge Domain. Blessings of Knowledge is a reaction. After the last clue is discovered from your location, draw one card. Limit once per game at each location. Okay. Knowledge of the Ages. When an investigator location discovers one or more clues, exhaust cleric and spend one divinity. They, divinity. they discover one additional clue. I like clue mode. Clue mode's pretty sick. Clue mode is pretty sick. Nature Domain. Accolade of Nature. You may take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used to play ritual cards or activate uh, action abilities on them. Okay. Dampen Elements. As a Lightning Bolt, Exhaust Cleric, and Spin 1 Divinity, reduce the cost of the next ritual asset you play by 3. It enters play with 2 additional uses. That's cool. I like it. My brain is so overflowing with possibilities that I don't even know what to say. <laughs> That's really good, though. There are a lot of ritual cards? Yeah, there are a lot of ritual cards. Tempest Domain. Wrath of the Storm. Lightning Bolt. Return a total of two blessed tokens to the token pool with the Chaos Bag or seal on cards in play. Place one Divinity on Cleric. That's cool. I like the blessed token with the Cleric. Lightning Bolt. Destructive Wrath. During a skill test, you're performing Exhaust Cleric and spend one Divinity. Do not reveal Chaos Tokens for this test. Woo! That's pretty good. That's really good. Holy hell. 
That is a powerful effect. That's pretty strong. Yep, this one's the one that interests me the most so far. I think it's just fun and also powerful. Trickery Domain. X is your location shroud. Okay. Lightning, uh, sorry, reaction, blessing of the trickster. When your turn begins, search the top X cards of your deck for a trick card and draw it. Uh, trick Cleric uh, Rita. Shuffle your deck. Reaction, invoke duplicity. After you play a trick card, exhaust Cleric and spend one divinity. Discover clues your location equal to half of X. That's really good. I mean, like, once again, this, this one doesn't replace it. So this one actually can replace it. This one doesn't. So you only get two uses, but it scales up as the campaign goes. It's very powerful. Um, you might notice that I'm not saying too much about the cards themselves. I'm just saying, like, hey, that's great, or this seems powerful. And that's just because, like, the design has been pretty uh, solid. So I don't really have much to say, to be honest. I think it's all just... I was just basically reading the cards and going, Wow. War Domain. Subclass Permanent. War Priest. There was a reaction. After you ready a card during an investigator's turn, exhaust Cleric. That investigator may take an additional action during their turn, which can only be used to fight, so galvanize. Lightning Bolt. Spend a Divinity. Ready an asset to your location. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it seems good. It seems really fun. A lot of different ways you can take Cleric, but that's kind of how Cleric works in D&D as well. All right. All right, so this is a bonded card. So let's look at Bless first. Mm. Cleric deck only customizable blank sanity. All right, let's see what this symbol means. We've seen this before. Concentration. Okay. The concentration keyword is designed uh, designated by the this icon is used by certain card effects that require a heightened focus to maintain. Each concentration card will have a test associated with it. After an investigator takes damage in a horror, they perform a concentration test. If they fail, they must discard the concentration card. Okay. Concentration tests can test your health, sanity, or either in which case you choose. Each test is formatted with your base skill value being your max value and the test difficulty being the current value. Okay. For example, Concentration Health for a roll-in with 4 damage assigned to him would be testing a skill value of 9 against a test difficulty of 4. Oh, okay. Okay, so he has 4 damage. Okay. You may commit Fist and Foot Icons to test Health, Book, and Brain that test Sanity. Additionally, du additionally double the negative modifier of each real Chaos token during a Concentration Test. Okay. Discrete instances of damage and horror do not trigger multiple concentration attacks, but multiple attacks will. For example, if a treachery said for each point you fail by, either take a damage or lose a resource. Should you choose to take damage one one damage three times, you only require to perform a single concentration test. Whereas if a treachery said this enemy attacks three times, you must perform a concentration test for each attack that dealt damage and or horror to you. I get it. It's a bit messy, but I get why it's that way. Like, even actually, like, to me, I, I additionally double the negative modifier. I wish it was just revealed too. Just because I think that's a little bit cleaner and people can understand that a bit better. Like, additionally, reveal an additional uh, token for this test. Each player can only control one card with concentration. Yeah. Uh, when an investigator plays a concentration card, they discard all the concentration cards they control. Uh, during any lightning bolt player window, you may discard a concentration card you control. Yeah, I, I dig it. I get it. Like, I get it. it actually, it is pretty... Uh, It's all sensical. I'm just nitpicking, though. I think the mechanic's really neat. Um, a little bit uh, tough if you have to, like, look at all of these cards. But if you're just concentrating, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Concentration Sanity. After Bless enters play, choose up to two investigators' locations. Search your bonded cards for Blessed and put one into play under the control of each of the chosen investigators. Uh, at the end of the round... Place one horror on Bless. If it has three or more horror on it, discard it. Okay. Blessed. After you initiate a skill test, exhaust Blessed on a uh, Blessed token in the bag. Reveal five random tokens in the Chaos bag. For each Elder Sign or Blessed token revealed, you get plus one skill value for this test. Okay. After the least play, set Blessed aside out of play. 
You may choose one additional investigator. You may choose one additional investigator. Play Bless does not provoke attacks of opportunity. You may choose investigators to connect locations as well. Diversify for concentration. You may test health or sanity. After this play, you may choose to take up a body slot and seven arcane slot. Holy Warrior. Bless is now a cleric and paladin deck only except Oathbreaker card. Okay, so... <clears throat> you can play it as a paladin. Which we'll get to eventually, I'm sure. We're only on C, so we have a lot to go. Divine Favor, add two Bless tokens instead of one. If you cannot add bless, any Bless tokens to the Chaos Bag, the Performing Investigator gets uh, advantage. Yeah! <clears throat> Cards are neat. Cards certainly neat. I dig it. Okay. Guiding Bolt. Two cost, one experience. Clear attack only. Uses three charges. Takes up the spell slot. Action. Spend a charge to fight. You may use Brain instead of Fist to get plus one skill for this attack. If you succeed, deal plus one damage, and the next attack performed against the enemy gains advantage. That's cool. I like it. Nice and simple. I'm so into it. I love it. I think the card's great. Warding Bond. I'm not saying the classes. So, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this like a podcast, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am sorry. Two cost, two experience. Spirit Ritual takes up the body slot. Soaks for two and two. Cleric deck only. Play Warden Bond under the control of another investigator at your location. At any time, you may reveal your hand to Warden Bond's owner and vice versa. You may play events and commit cards from their hand as if those cards were in your hand. That's pretty fun. That's really cool. I think there's could be some fun stuff that you could build with that. I think that's a pretty cool kind of design. I dig it. I dig it. Okay, Spirit Guardians. Three cost, three experience. Takes up the spell slot. Spell Spirit Blessed. Cleric deck only. Concentration Sanity. It's a reaction after Spirit Guardians enters play. For each enemy here, resolve the ability below as if they just entered here. Okay. It's a reaction when an enemy enters your location. Test Brain 3. If a Bless or Elder Sign token is revealed during this test, deal 1 damage to that enemy. If he succeed, deal 1 damage to that enemy. Okay. I like it. It's just you and the bros. The bros are backing you up. I think it's cool. Yeah, Ghost Gang. I think this is also like, it, this. I like this because this feels a lot different than Bard. It feels a lot different than Barbarian. I really dig it. Father Mateo fighting? Yeah, Father Mateo. I'm down for it. I think this is a fun card. Guardian of Faith. Three cost, three experience. Spell summon. Three and three for soak. Cleric deck only. Guardian of Faith can only be assigned damage and horror via the ability below. Forced. When an enemy deals any amount of damage and or horror to an investigator at your location via an effect or attack, assign it to Guardian of Faith and deal that much damage to that enemy. Yeah, it's Guard Dog. Big Guard Dog. I like it. Again. It's just all nice and clean. It's just all nice and clean. How many classes do we have left? <laughs> We're 43 minutes into this video. This honestly might be broken up into two parts. This is a ginormous expansion. What is here and the enemies here? I'm going to say at the location that Spirit Guardians is in, right? So, it after enters play, for each enemy here, at the location with Spirit Guardians, resolve the ability as if they just entered here. So, it's at the here is the location that Spirit Guardians is. So if you could play it at your location, it's all enemies at your location. If for some reason you play it at some other location, it would trigger at that location instead. Here is where the enemies are. It's like Arby's. When you're here, you're family. I don't think that's Arby's. <laughs> yeah, cool. Divine Intervention. Zero cost, five experience. Okay. Fast. Play when an investigator reveals a chaos token. Cancel reveal tokens and treat them as an elder sign instead. Remove one Doom from the current agenda and exile Divine Intervention. When earning experience during the resolution of the scenario, you earn five additional experience, max once per campaign. That's fun. 
Olive Garden. Ah, it's Olive. That's Olive Garden. All right, perfect. Ah, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, flavorfully, this is perfect, right? This is like exactly kind of like what Divine Intervention is. I think that's really cool. Yeah, it pays for itself XP-wise, yep. Yeah. Because you can only play it once in the whole campaign, right? What a card. That's really cool. I really like the cleric class. So right now I think barbarian, just because it's my playstyle, then cleric. A lot of cool shit here. Yeah, we're not getting through all these in this one video. Also, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm dying. <laughs> For some reason, I, I, I I've just suddenly have started feeling like I am unwell. <laughs> I am like... Ugh. What's happening? Alright. The Druid. Yeah, notice the voice is different. I'm a little bit, I guess I'm like a little bit stuffed up. Alright. I love the Druids. They're not one of my favorites, but I like the class. I'm excited to see what happens here. Two charges. Druid enters play with one additional charge for every ten experience you've earned in total. Wild Shape is an action. Exhaust Druid and spend one charge. Put one set-aside bonded asset into the play. When at least play set it aside, this action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Alright. Let us check it out. These are all bonded to Druid. Alright. Spider. Set your base skill values to 4, 2, 3, 3. After... After you perform a successful attack... We're playing, by the way, Preston... Um, Preston Druid, okay? Set your base skill values to 4, 2, 3, 3. Reaction Web. After you perform a successful attack or evasion attempt against a non elite enemy, Exhaust Spider. That enemy cannot move or make attacks of opportunity for the remainder of the round. Money is green. Green is nature. It checks out. It checks out. Is green in the upgrades? Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, Survivor 2 makes tons of sense. Yeah. Alright. For this little attack or evasion attempt against a non elite enemy, exhaust spider. You silk it up. Dude. Whew. Druid seems very powerful. Is there anything expansion got about Wild Shape? Great, great, great show. Let's check it out. Wild Shape, here we go. Uh, wild Shapes are formed the Druids can take. Cards of Wild Shape here cannot be included in the player's deck. Instead, all Wild Shape cards are bonded to the Druid class. A deck creation, uh, your Druid level 0 for every 10 experience you earn in total. Increase your Druid level by 1. You cannot put it to play with a resource cost greater than your Druid level. Okay, okay. You cannot have more than one card with the Wild Cage Shape keyword in your play area. During any Lightning Bolt window, you may discard a Wild Shape asset. Uh, Trade as a card effect. Non-direct damage and a horror must be assigned to Wild Shape before it can be assigned to your Investigator card. Wild Shape forms some restrictions on when they can be put into play. Wild Shapes that are exclusive to Circle of the Moon will say Moon only. Okay. So you can get... Uh, these are the ones you can start with. So we should read down the row. And then as you get 10 experience, 20, 30, 40 experience. Preston Druid sounds like he's appropriating a culture. 100%. He's a millionaire. He's a little bit problematic, but, you know, that's life, right? Okay. Yeah, I dig it. I mean, like, if you have Soak, it's going to be harder to kill these things. I like it, though. Wolf. Say your base skill values to 2, 2, 4, 4. Inciting Howl. After an investigator moves from your locate from or to your location, exhaust wolf. That investigator moves to a connecting uh, location from their current location. That's cool. Cat Russell, where are you, buddy? It's you. Say your base skill values to two four two four. You cannot take basic actions. You cannot take non basic actions. I love that on the survivor side. Side. The scarred cat automatically evade a non-elite enemy or location. That's clever. It's stray cat, baby. I love it. I love it. 
So yeah, I love uh, when you put this in your deck, these are going to be the ones you can turn into. When you have 10 experience, you can then do all of these. And then at 20, you can do all of these. 30, 40, you can do them all. Awesome. Okay. Bear. 2253. An action. Claws. Exhaust bear to fight. You deal plus one damage for this attack. As a lightning bolt, choose and discard a card from your hand to ready bear. Oh. Alright, Druid's my new number one. This one seems really fun, and we haven't even got it to the player cards yet. Super Duke. Super Duke and really good in Ash Can Pete. Really good in Ash Can Pete. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Badger. We love Badgers here. 3-4-3-2. Three, three, Burrow. Exhaust Badger. Choose a card in any Investigator's discard pile. Shove into a deck. Then they gain one resource. Yeah. I like it, too. I mean, I think there's a reason for all of these ones as well. All right. Deep Rotha. Set your base skill values to 4242. There's a Dancing Lights, Lightning Bolt, Exhaust Deep Rotha, then Performing Investigator gets bless. Sorry, gets advantage for this test. That is good. Hear me out. A Druid Preston with a Barbarian uh, Silas. You can also choose which to use situationally. Yes, which is super awesome because, like, they're all. They all have their uses, right? Like, they're all very good. At what you need and basically so at level zero you can play these ones and you get two changes oh i haven't even looked at these yet which we'll get to <laughs> we'll get to these but you can do these ones and then when you get to this you have three uses and then when you get to these ones you have four uses which is really cool i think it's really awesome dire raven moon only okay so this is our first moon only one Set your base skill values to 3414. Exhaust Dire Raven and deal horror to it. Discover clue at any location, then you may move to that location. Hey, it's like the Raven card. <sighs> yeah. That's really good. Oh, what the hell? These all make me like very excited to build with them. I might have to do it. That might be something we're doing pretty soon, to be honest. These are all just really cool cards. Alright. Sa Sabertooth Tiger. Say your base skill values to 3153. This is moon only, by the way. Pounce. It's an action. Exhaust Sabertooth Tiger and move. Choose an enemy at a connecting location. Move to its location and take a fight action against that enemy. If you succeed... Sorry, successfully attack that enemy, exhaust and deal plus one damage. Yeah, that's powerful. And you take a fight action, so it can be with a weapon, too. This is this is also kind of like a Super Duke. Whew. Okay. Yeah, Ultra Duke. <laughs> we had Super Duke before, but now we have Ultra Duke. Wow. What a card. This one is moon only, so it would make sense to be stronger, right? We need a duke scale for the uh, for these. Yeah. Well, we have it. This is super duke, and this is ultra duke. And this is going to be mega duke. All right. Elemental. So this is the level three one. Wild shape bonded druid. Set your base skill values to 4413. You can have up to two concentration cards in play. Interesting. After you play a card with a concentration keyword, heal a damage or horror from elemental. Whoa! So naturally, I think this also makes concentration better, right? Because you have to put the damage on um, your wild shape before you start putting the damage on yourself. Which means that the concentrations... Yeah. 
is not going to get worse. Because if you're testing like brain, like if you're testing against concentration health, it's not going to be on you because you're going to be stuck in your elemental mode. That's really cool. Okay. Yeah, I dig it. Owlbear. This is the one that Travis loves. This is what Travis is playing in Baldur's Gate right now. He's been telling me all about his Owlbear adventures. Set your base skill values to 4152. As a lightning bolt exhaust, Owlbear engage an enemy or location, that enemy attacks you. As a reaction, when an enemy attack deals damage in a horror to Owlbear, deal with that much damage to an, um, damage and horror to the, uh, as damage to the attacking enemy. Okay, yeah, that's cool. I dig it. I dig it for sure. And then we got, this is the level 4 version. Yeah, that's Ultra God, but Guard Dog. We got Displacer Beast. After this card enters play, or after turn begins, set the base value to your skills to 5 and the rest to 1. Illusory Copy. Anytime an Investigator location would exhaust a card, they may exhaust Displacer Beast instead. Costs that require a card to be exhausted are considered paid. I'm going to wager there's some crazy shit you can do with this. I just don't know it off the top of my head. Um, how about... I know it's not in the class, but let's go uh, fucking... <laughs> hammer? Cyclopean Hammer? Let's go... I mean, like, even just, like, looking at all the things that exhaust, like, even, like, a freaking... Um, fingerprint kit? Like the upgraded versions? I'm into that. I think that's really cool. I also like it because it doesn't just directly outclass all these other things. What I think that um, these designs for the wild shapes, Doom Charms, yeah, that's pretty sick too. I think that what these have done is kind of just made it so that they're all... There's a reason for every vial, uh, wild shape depending on what you need. Like maybe these ones are going to get outclassed as it goes. But I think everything uh, that you have available to you for these ones because you you basically don't have these two right but i think everything else there's a reason for it except for maybe elemental i think elemental you need to be in the right deck for but i think that's really sweet and now we can finally check out the subclasses so nature's ward while you control a wild shape asset do not perform concentration tests when you take damage or horror okay so there's the other uh elemental as an action, land stride, exhaust druid parlay, move to a player card, move a player card attached to your location to a connecting location or vice versa. You may move to the current attached location. Whoa! Okay. Okay. Map the area across the board. And you don't it's still a move action. You're still moving with it. Well, it's not a move action, but it, it like it it's moving you, so it's like a it's a move action. It's a move action, but not actually a move action. This one's really cool. Uh, Circle of the Moon. Lunar Men, increase your Druid level by one. When you trigger Wild Shape, you may put into play assets that say Moon only. Wild Shape's action ability is now a Lightning Bolt. Yeah, it seems really good. Barricade while moving? Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that seems really good. That seems like a good time. Circle of the Spores. Uh, wild shape assets only set base skill values higher than your base skill values. Okay, that's cool. Okay, okay. So, like... Your stats will never go down. So with this base, Displacer Beast, you could be like a 5-5-5-3. Five, 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 okay. When a cardio location is discarded or defeated, exhaust druid, move one damage or horror from that card to another cardio location is damaged. It is still defeated or discarded. That's cool. I like it. Honestly, the Druid class is really interesting. Let's check out their, their uh, special cards. Alright, Thorn Whip. Zero cost, event, Druid deck only, fast player in any Lightning Bolt player window. Choose a connecting location, move a card attached to that location. Not only an enemy or clue from that location to your location. Yeah, okay, yeah, just whip it. Whip it good, right? There's not really too much to say. I just think that card's kind of good. I would like to see this card in the game. <laughs> uh, 
Spreading Spores. Three costs, two experience, arcane slot. It's exceptional. Spore Druid deck only. That checks out. Does the Lightning Bolt take a damage or horror gain a resource? As a reaction, after card location, discarded or defeated, exhaust spreading spores. Play a card from your discard pile, increase the resource cost by one. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I love it. I love it. Wow. Because I feel like, oh, why are you face down yet? I still need to look at you. Oh, I'm on Cleric. What the hell? <laughs> We're done with you. I like the Spore one a lot, but it didn't really have, like, a reason as much compared to the other ones, I think. But this one, this is a... that's pretty sweet. That's a pretty good ability. And then for the Wild Shape... How does that work? Oh, so, because it doesn't say... If your wild shape dies... Like, how do bonded cards work? Do they naturally, if they leave play, if it doesn't say, do they go back to being bonded? Or do they... They don't. They go into your discard pile, right? So this allows you to continually play... These? Is that accurate? That's interesting. What's the druid card say? Spend a charge, put one set aside, bond it has to play when it leaves play. Ah, oh, set it aside. Okay, yeah, it says it on that one. Alright. Okay, so there's no synergy with that part of it. Okay. Let's move on. Moonbeam! Oh, we love Moonbeam. I have memories of a buddy of mine using Moonbeam all the time. They just loved Moonbeam. Three costs, two experience. Druid deck only, concentration on sanity. Fight, this deck uses brain instead of foot, or brain or foot instead of fist. After this test ends, attach Moonbeam to your location. Forced, after you attach Moonbeam to a location, deal one damage to a card at that location. Uh, detach Moonbeam from your location, attach it to a connecting location. Yeah, that's Moonbeam. That's actually just how Moonbeam works. Pretty cool. I love it. I like it with, uh, you know, obviously the concentration one. Really cool. Plant growth. Three costs, three experience. Druid and ranger deck only. Ranger as well, okay. Does that mean it's in the ranger pile too? Let's just go a little... Ranger, ranger, ranger. I made you out of clay. Ranger, ranger, ranger. It's not... So you can just also find it there, okay. Um, attach your location, heal each creature asset your location for all damage or hor and horror. As a lightning bolt exhaust a creature asset you control, heal one damage and horror from that asset, or you get plus two skill value for this test. Any investigator up to one connection away from that attached location may trigger this ability. Hmm. Really cool. I like it. I'm excited to see how rangers work. Wall of Thorns. Two cost, five experience, druid deck only, concentration, health. Attached to location during upkeep phase, you may choose to not ready Wall of Thorns. As a reaction, after an enemy enters attached location, uh, exhaust Wall of Thorns, exhaust that enemy and cannot ready while Wall of Thorns is exhausted. As action, discard a non-weakness treachery attached to this location. Okay, that's pretty, it's five experience, so this card's going to be good. Cannot ready while it's exhausted. That's really good. You can use it to just like cancel attacks and then ready it. That enemy is also going to ready. And you discard. Yeah, that seems really powerful. I like it. It doesn't move, notably like Moonbeam moves. But luckily we have Circle of the Land. Really cool. Hero's Feast. Cleric and Druid only. Two cost, five experience. For each effect below, choose an investigator location to resolve it max once per game. Place three uses on an asset you control. Heal two damage and two horror. Gain five resources. Draw three cards. Uses. 
uses. Okay, all right. All Druid cards have wild icons? Well, I mean, they do have wild shape, right? So it only makes sense, right? Exactly. Yeah, this card's really good. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty powerful card. I don't know if I'd rush to get it, but it is, like, a great going into the final scenario. Just like, hey, I'm gonna just ensure we win the game. Powerful cards. Send these things back. We got, we're gonna do two more classes in this video. I'm gonna see if I can make it. Hey, it's Mentor of the Meek. I'm gonna see if I can make it. I think I can. Even though I'm, I don't know, something that I've, this might be the last time you see me live on stream. <laughs> Alright, here's my favorite class. I love fighters, because all you do is hit things with sticks. It's really easy. You just hit things and jump on things. It's really fun. Fighter, class permanent. When the first turn of the game begins, place one damage on it. For every ten experience you've earned in total, place one additional damage on it. That's going to be for fighter. As an lightning bolt action surge, exhaust fighter and move one damage from it, you may take an additional action during your turn this round. Yep, that's a fighter. That's a fighter. If I've ever seen it, that's what they do. They fight. <laughs> uh, they just get to do fight actions. Ah, uh, this was not just fight action, just additional action, though. When you're for a mark bonus? I think so. I do think so. Alright, let's see their uh, subclasses. Battle Master. Battle Maneuvers is a reaction. After you see that a skill test while attacking an enemy, spend one superiority. So this is three superiority. Choose one. Double the damage you deal to enemies for the next attack. That enemy cannot attack for the remainder of the round. Exhaust that enemy. If it's not elite, move that enemy to a connecting location. Seems good. Seems good. Double all of them? Yeah, flamethrower, baby. Every fighter's favorite weapon is flamethrower. Alright. Fighter. Eldritch Knight. It's a reaction weapon bond. Before you draw your opening hand, search your deck for a weapon asset and add it to your hand as additional card. Reduce the grit's resource cost by two during your first turn. That's incredible. That's that's incredible. Uh, you get plus one skill value during skill tests on weapon assets. Weapon assets do not take up any hand slots. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? I think that the subclasses need to be pretty fat powerful because this is not, right? I think the base, this is probably the weakest one we've seen, right? Uh, of the of all the base ones we've seen, except for maybe Cleric. No, Cleric's is, I think, stronger. Um, this is insane. Fighter Tony Morgan? Holy crap. Okay, Fighter Champion. Improved critical hit. Anytime you're revealing an Elder Sign or plus one token during a skill test, you may choose to treat it as an Elder Sign token. You may use the effects below instead of its normal effects. Elder Sign effect. You automatically succeed. Draw one card and gain one resource. If this test is during an attack, this attack deals plus one damage. Yeah, I think it's like the less, the least exciting of the three, but I would love to play this in a Butterfly Swords Lily Chen deck. I think that would be really fun. 
Yeah, flamethrower, no body slot. I mean, Garabai or Tony, you now just can, like... Um... <laughs> uh, you could play... <laughs> So you just get Garot Wire. Is there two T's in Garot Wire? I broke the game. There it is. So you could play two of these. <laughs> and then also just play like a Lucky Cigarette Case. It seems really wild. It seems really fun. Yeah, uh, powerful. Powerful. Um, let's see what fighters cooking in their player cards. There's two extra attacks. Okay, well, look at both of these at the same time, I think. Two cost, two experience, extra attack. Yeah, this is the classes I saw this in. Uh, fast, play after you resolve a fight ability on a card you control. I mean, like, yeah, bandolier, double flame. Like, just the bandolier, ba like, basically turning that into the flamethrower as well. There's a lot of cool things you can do. Fast. Play after you resolve a fight ability on a card you control. Resolve its effects again. You get plus two skill value and advantage for this test. If you exceed by two or more, you may shovel extra, ta extra attack into your deck at the end of your turn. Yeah, that's very fighter. That's very fighter. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Let's see the level five ver level four version. Sorry. Zero cost. Look at those symbols it commits for. I mean, it's kind of the same as the first one. This one actually is also really good. Uh, fast. Play if you resolve a fight ability in a card you control. I'll resolve its effect again. You get plus three skill value and advantage for this test. Advantage notably works really well with the champion as well. Um, if you succeed, you may shuffle extra attack into your deck at the end of the turn. If you succeed by two or more, you may return into your hand at the end of the turn instead. What the fuck? That's going to be so good until you draw the autofail, but you get advantage, so you have to critical miss. Yeah, this is fighters, right? Like, so fighters, they don't do, like, the real, real crazy, like, stuff that, like, wizards and sorcerers and bards and all that can get to. Um, but they just, like, punch a bunch, and this is punching a bunch. I love it. Uh, this is, like, what I like to do. So this is just, yeah, they're just unga bunga. This is the favorite class. Yeah, fighters are my favorite. Because they just they just fight. They do exactly what it says on the tin. Alright. Indomitable. Two cost, two three experience, fighter deck only, limit one per investigator. Each non winning card in your hand or committed to a skill test gains wild wild while there's another copy of that card in your play area or discard pile. Oh, that's cool. Okay. That's really good. Silas? The fighter being your favorite class is so fitting to your uh, playstyle. Yeah, it's just efficiency. That the, my playstyle in any game is just as long as it's like efficient, I will win. You know, I don't need to be the best. I just need to be good every action I take, and I will win the game. And that's like my theory for literally every game I play in my life. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I kind of want to play Fighter Silas for sure. I also kind of want to play Fighter to Tony Morgan. I want to play Fighter Mark Harrigan. I want to do a lot with these cards. They seem like they'll be a blast to play with. Heavy Armor Master. Fighter deck only permanent. For Also for record, I probably would gain trauma, I think. I think I would try the t trauma recommendation for this. All right. You get plus one health, you have one additional body slot. Let's go. Nice and simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't take it if I was doing uh, Eldritch Knight probably, but I would take it for these other two. I love it. Great Weapon Master. Three experience, fighter deck only permanent, limit one per deck. It's a reaction when you would succeed at a skill test during an attack with a weapon asset that takes up at least two hand slots. Exhaust, Great Weapon Master. You get minus two skill value and deal plus one damage with this attack. Okay. Let's do that again. 
When you succeed at a skill test during an attack that takes up at least two hand slots, exhaust it. You get minus two skill value, so an anti-lucky, but you get to deal plus one damage. Dude, they're so good. Like, they're not doing anything, like, broken. They're just damage. They just fight. Alert. Plus one sanity. Play with the top of the encounter deck revealed. That's cool. That's kind of fun. Yeah, fighter. I love it. I love it. It's a good time. They're probably my new favorite. But that's mostly because, like the... Um, the incident at the Mirgira Fault, it was made for me. This hole was made for me. Alright. Well, I wasn't expecting this to take two videos, but this is going to be the last class we're looking at it. We're going to be looking at Monk, and then next, for the next video, uh, Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, Sorcerer, Warlock, and Wizard. So we have all my... Uh, <laughs> I like Rogue and, uh, sorry, I like Paladin and Ranger, but I'm not a fan of these classes. So, we'll see how it goes, but I mean, like, the designs of these are really nice. But I do think it's such a success that the, um, from the design perspective, that the classes that I really enjoy have resonated with me a lot. I think that says, uh, a great, um, aspect for the design here. Okay. Monk. Uses two key. Monk enters play with additional one key for every two ex every ten experience you've earned. Your basic actions are considered unarmed. Perfect. I think I'm going to like the monk too. I think I might like the monk in this one. Flurry of, fear, flurry of blows. After taking an unarmed action, exhaust monk and spend one key. Take an unarmed action. I like that it's not only put into fighting. So like a basic investigate is really good. Yeah, they've got to be Survivor, right? Yeah. All the Seekers uh, and Mystic, those are going to be in our spell casting. Oh, Rogue's going to be Seeker. That's kind of fun. Ranger, Seeker, that checks out. And Paladin, no, they're not Seekers. Yeah, Warlock will be Seeker too. Warlock and Wizard? Oh, no, Warlock's Survivor. Okay, cool. All right. Let's check out the Monk uh, subclasses. Way of the Four Elements. This enters play with two additional key. As a reaction, Disciple of the Elements. After a skill test during an unarmed action ends, place a skill card you commit to the test at the bottom of your deck instead of discarding it and draw a card. Wow. Cool. I like it. Like, obviously it has some non-bow synergy with Survivor, but I also just, like, kind of dig it. You know? I kind of just dig it. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Way of the open hand. Subclass permanent. Key resonation. While you've committed one or more skill cards to an unarmed fight actions, your attack deal additional damage. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. So this kind of does what Nathaniel Cho has done for events for unarmed fighting. Okay, you need four experience to get there. It's like Silas Harpoon, but you are Harpoon. You are Harpoon. Notably, it's unarmed though, and you don't get any bonuses for unarmed fighting. You just gotta make your stat big. So it might be tough with Silas. We'll see what happens. After you heal damage in a horror place, one key on Monk. Okay. Okay. Way of Shadow. Shadow Arts is a reaction. After you fail a skill, after you fail a skill test during an unarmed action, return all skill cards, come into that skill test, and place a key on Monk. Okay, that's cool. Honestly, I think all of them are really neat. I think all of these are really neat uh, subclasses to explore in Monk. I wonder how urgent you need to get to your subclass. Probably it's your first four experience, because it is a permanent, right? So you don't even need to, like, put it in your deck. So you get it right away. I'm into it. I'm into it. All right, let's check out these monk cards. Monka S. 
All right. Purity of the ball. Purity of body, innate and practiced. One experience, monk deck only. After you commit purity of body to a skill test, heal one damage or horror. While it's committed to a skill test during an unarmed action, it gains wild wild. So it's brain fist wild. So it's a promise of power for an unarmed fight action. It's a three symbols for like an unarmed investigate, which is basic, by the way. That's just how we're going on that. So notably, if we come over here, just give me this for a second. The heal effect will work with Silas's pushback. Yeah, pullback. Let's see on that. Yes, after you commit it, it would, which is really nice for Silas. All right. So basic actions. Notably, your basic actions are considered unarmed. So, a play action, right? Because that's a, a basic action. So you can take play actions uh, with your key, which is really nice. A move is a basic action. There's a lot of that quiet stuff, too. Like, obviously, in, like, its peak mode, you're going to be doing this for investigating and fighting to take advantage out of it, right? But it's just going to save on actions in other places as well, which is really nice. And yes, this was really nice in Silas. <laughs> yes. All right. Stillness of the mind. Oh, God. It's innate practice. One experience. Commits for a brain, a book, and a wild. After you commit stillness of mind to a skill test, draw a card. Once again, works with Silas. And while it's committed to a skill test during an unarmed action, it gains wild, wild. What's that new card, Persistence, in Hemlock Veil? Vale? Shuffle it into your deck after this test ends. Okay, hear me out. You're using this one. So you're placing these on the bottom when the action ends, right? Oh, that's really funny, Holy Helicopter. And our move is walking down the stairs without holding the rails. Amen. <laughs> that's really funny. So, um, you put this, and then if you ever can find ways to shuffle your deck, like, I don't know, improvised weapon, um, whatever the serve, uh, winging it, you know, or persistence, you can get these cards back quicker. I like it a lot. I think it's pretty sweet. Any kind of search effect? Yeah, exactly. Step of the Wind. This is an innate practice skill. Commits for a brain, a foot, and a wild. After you commit it to a skill test, you may shuffle an asset in your play area into your deck. Hey, here's another shuffle. Then play an asset from your hand, reducing its cost on the shuffled asset. I gotta play Monk Silas. This is the problem. Once again, as, as, uh, as you said earlier, Beard, there's like, I'm getting, there's so many fucking potential ideas for my favorites here. And I still want to do Bard Norman as well. While well, it's committed to a skill test during an unarmed action against Wild Wild. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> that's okay, you got me. That's really cool. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Alright, Martial Arts. Three experience, monk deck only permanent. As a reaction, when you play an event, exhaust martial arts, this action is considered unarmed. After you form an attack using a melee action, exhaust it, take an unarmed fight action. Yeah, okay. That's really cool. I think that's pretty sweet. I don't know what to say other than yes, I am excited to play with this. It hasn't trumped fighter or druid for me, but this one's pretty good. It's pretty good. Martial arts Nathaniel Cho. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Is there a re like playing event? Ah, oh, okay. So playing is a basic action, but the action is not ba unarmed. So the play action is unarmed, but the event isn't. Okay, resolving the event isn't, so you don't get the other synergy. Okay, it works with those. Okay, I get it. I get it. I want Silas Marsh to deflect missiles. 
One cost, three experience, monk deck only. Fast, play when investigate location as dealt damage or horror. Cancel up to three damage and a horror just dealt to them. Then you may spend one key from a monk to deal that much damage to an enemy at your location. Yeah, that seems pretty cool. Nice card. Nice. And then we got Fangs of the Fire Snake. This is a two cost, three experience, four elements deck only. So that is the, okay, the shuffle one. The one that I actually am most interested in playing. Fight, you get plus two fists and deal plus two damage to the attack. It's just a cost to play Fangs of the Fire Snake. You may spend one key from Monk to target an enemy location up to three locations away. And this action is considered um, unarmed. Ignite. Oh, I miss Ignite. What does Ignite do? Have we, have we seen that on previous stuff or is that the first one? That's the first time we've seen it. Ignite. All right, cards of the keyword have a special interactions with flammable tokens represented by damage on locations. When a card or effect with Ignite deals damage to the location with one or more flammable tokens, remove all flammable tokens from that location. For each flammable token removed, you must choose discover a clue from that location, deal damage to card of that location. The card that is dealt damage to the, as the investigator enemy with the lowest agility value if they metamatize. Okay. Yeah. Probably a wizard warlock thing for sure. But this is fire, so it does fit with a thing. I actually would love um if this had a fire trait, you know? I don't think these, these probably will have ignite on them. But we, if we can just see if we can find them for wizards. Or maybe it's on other stuff. Maybe it's on one of these. I don't want to get too lost in the sauce. Hey, we have another wild magic. That's fun. Could also be in the general card. Yeah, I would like it if they had, like, a, a consistent trait to also show it. I think that would be nice. No, there's no scenarios. This is just player cards. It's probably, yeah, it's probably going to be somewhere in somewhere uh, one of these as well. There's a lot of moving pieces to this... To this expansion. There's a lot. But I will say... The design's really tight. The design is really tight. I have a link down in the YouTube description where you can find the workshop. I'm going to assume there's a workshop link for it. I'll just dig it up. Uh, if not, you can find it in the Arkham mod. It's just right here right now. It's featured fan content. Um, this is wild. Uh, we're halfway through the first pack of three. Luckily, the investigators and player cards should be pretty more straightforward. Um, yeah. So, 90-ish minutes halfway through those and we got these for the next video of this which should be on the channel pretty soon but i just want to say a huge thanks to minty fan because you know your designs are crazy and i like reading them and a huge thank you to everyone who watched this video and to all of our patrons and for everyone who joined me in chat for stream i agree navarb this is a very cool set so far it's really neat and i think i might do some I think I might play around and build some decks uh, this afternoon, potentially. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> I'm mean, very intrigued, but thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one, and as always, a GG's.